Hey guys, back here today to give you a look at the Chi2 Box Slicer for your resin 3D printers. Very excited to give you guys an overview of this today. Uh, I've been using this for the better part of the past, past month or two, and I'm absolutely loving it. Here are a bunch of 3D files that I'm gonna bring into the slicer. Keep in mind, some of these are fairly large in size. And the first thing I wanted to call out is that the reason why I'm loving this so much is that it performs so well. It's incredibly fast compared to a lot of the other proprietary resin slicers that are available that uh, most of the companies want you using for their specific resin 3D printers. I won't call it any specifics, but uh, yeah, some of them are decent and some of them are just horrible, but this slicer just runs so fast. I first heard about this from VFX Forge, uh, who's another YouTuber here that I'll have links to his videos that have a lot more details on the specifics of how to use this particular slicer. Um, but I first heard about it over on the Inacubic Photon user group, and I've been primarily using these 3D zip guys here, hey now, uh, from um, a, a project that I'm working on that I'll be showing probably next week and been using this on my Inacubic Photon before it just recently broke down. So here I can individually rearrange files by clicking and dragging them around the build plate here or if I wanted to auto arrange, I can auto arrange along the center, something like this, and then manually rearrange these as, uh, as I see fit. So here I could put the thighs by each other, that type of thing. Here you you also have the ability here, let me click back on the head here. If I wanted to rotate this around, I can click and drag these around. Uh, or pulling up the menu here, I can put in values, which is really cool. Uh, I can also rescale files, which I've used a handful of times because sometimes I'm bringing things in here that are huge. Or if I need to mirror parts, I can very easily mirror parts. So if I need a left or right version of a particular part that I'm printing. Um, again, a lot of these features you'd think would be in a lot of these other slicers, but they're not. And, or if you're trying to use them, they're incredibly clunky or hard to use. Uh, so that's that over on the right hand side here, you'll see all of my different files. If I wanted to modify all of them at one time, I could select all or undo this individual selection uh, here to just work with the individual files. If I brought in, let's say, uh, I don't know, I pulled in an extra thigh that I did not want to pull in. I could delete that by clicking the delete button here. Uh, along the top here, you have the ability to open files, you save. If I wanted to export this all as, a, uh, as an STL, which is hugely important for some of these other slicers. So I could use this to basically arrange how I'd like on the build plate, generate my supports, or even hollow out the file, then export as an STL. Here you have the ability to screen capture. I've never used this. I don't know how well that works. If I wanted to undo or redo some of the changes that I've just made, uh, again, you'd be surprised that's not in all of the other slicers. It's a very basic thing and a lot of the keyboard shortcuts for that work as well. Um, here, if I wanted to clone a model, so basically copy and paste, I can do that on the page, um, which again is not available in some of these other slicers, which blows my mind. Auto arranging, which is great. Uh, one of the really cool features here is the ability to hollow out your files. All right, so let me come over here next. I've got my files arranged on the page, uh, pretty much how I'd like them to be arranged here. What I can do is now generate supports for these. So here within the support settings here, I can set the, oops, let me come back and select all because I want to generate supports for all the files, which is again, nice. I can choose each individual file separately to generate supports for or all of them, which again, you can't do in all of these slicers. Uh, so here you have the ability to set heavy, medium, or light settings for your supports. There's also some cool options here for things like sphere settings. It also gives you just a lot more control over the supports. This is where VFX Forge was a key component to this, where he provided some of his settings. Again, I'll be linking directly to his video where he talks about his settings that he used um, and uh, where basically I use those as my starting point and have been tweaking them ever since. So here I can set for the top, the middle, the bottom, and the raft as well. Um, but what's cool about this is I can very quickly come in here and say, hey, I wanna auto generate supports from just the platform to the bottom or throughout all of the files by clicking all. So I'll say all and it's gonna run through and it'll take a second here because some of these files are slightly large in size, 
but it will generate automatically the supports for all of these files. Now, again, this is one of the big primary reasons why I'm using the slicer is because it's so easy to generate supports and it's so fast to generate supports versus some of the other slicers. Uh, just to give you an idea on a few of the other slicers, if I were to run this exact same file on this, it would probably take anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes to actually do this slicing uh, or, or generating the supports automatically, which is just insane. So there's a lot of options that are available to you in terms of slicing. So here I can come in and if I wanted to add additional supports, I can come in and click add and start looking at locations where I might want to add additional supports here for some of these prints or if you know what i don't like these supports here on the front of the chest i can actually remove those this is again a little wonky thing you're going to click on the support that you want to remove then click on the delete button again and it will automatically delete that for you everything else here is looking pretty good it's got supports for the holsters let me look at the head supports under the head is where i need it uh, so overall, this is a really odd one off to the side there. Don't know why that's there. So let's remove that one. Um, but in general, really easy to use, really easy to work with. So the next step would be for me to actually run off and slice this. And that's where this is really, again, very, very cool. So here under the settings section, you can set up multiple resin 3D printers. It's going to have their uh, build information here, resin information, your print details. So again, this is something that you're going to want to tweak by print by print based on the resins that you're printing with. Uh, infill, basically never have that set up. But to set up a new printer, it's super simple. You come in here and click on add at the very bottom and you can choose from a listing of predefined file uh, profiles, let's say. So let me come back in here and I'll delete this Elgu Mars because I haven't really set that up just yet. Uh, but here I'll come in and say this and Elgu Mars. Yep, that's awesome. There's the printer. So here it's going to have all of the machine details automatically filled in for me and then I can fill this in. Uh, here you can see I have one set up for my uh, Inkspire resin 3D printer. However, I still have not been able to get this to entirely print as well as I need it to within the uh, the software. So that's one thing that I'm still working on and tweaking here within this slicer is just getting this to work correctly with the Inkspire. I do need to set this up for the Piopoli Moi. I know people are using this for the Moi as well, which is incredible. Uh, but I've been primarily using it for the Photon here. So once you have your files in place, you can click Slice and it will generate a Photon file that I can then put on my SD card and then load into the Photon and hit Print. So again, this is all about performance, speed for me, and the ability to very easily and quickly within one software come in here and very easily rearrange files, rotate them, add supports for these. Here I can see a preview of this after it's uh, all sliced and ready. So if I want to check in all of that and then now I can export this photon file out. So here uh, I can do that as well if I wanted to. So here I'll come back here. But uh, yeah, I just want to give you guys a quick overview of the Cheetu Box Slicer. I think this thing is really cool. If you have a resin 3D printer or if you're thinking about getting one, highly recommend checking it out. Again, runs on Mac, PC. Uh, really recommend checking out the VFX Forge. Uh, I'll include links to his channel and make sure to check out some of his videos as well. So much more in depth and more detailed than mine. Just wanted to give you guys a quick look at this and hopefully convert some of y'all over from using those standard slicers over to the Chi2 Box slicer here because it is, is it just one buttery, 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 buttery smooth. Hey, thanks again for watching, you guys, and I'll see you next time.